In the factory default configuration for the CFW11, as we saw in a previous video, we can control the drive through the HMI. In the remote configuration, which is where most customers will operate the drive, we can use the terminal strips to control the VFD. Default, the VFD looks for a closed contact for start-stop and a 0 to 10 volt speed signal. What we will show now is how to wire in a start-stop signal and a speed potentiometer into the drive and control the VFD. Once the cover is removed and we see the control terminal strip, the first thing we want to do is wire in a maintained closed contact to start the VFD. We see here we have a switch, closed contact, two wires. As we see in our control drawing, one side of the contact will go to terminal number 13. Terminal 13 on the control strip. The other side of the switch will wire to terminal 15. That's default for start stop. One thing to note for ease of wiring, these terminals can be removed from the VFD. I have a speed potentiometer, three wire speed potentiometer. We need to wire into terminals one, two, and three on the control terminal strip. We also, with a WEG CFW11, we do need to also put a jumper between terminals 3 and 4, so the negative side of the voltage will be associated with the negative side of the speed potenti potentiometer. So what we will do is wire the high side of the potentiometer into terminal 1. We will wire the wiper of the potentiometer into terminal 2. And wire the low side of the potentiometer into terminal 3. As stated, we will also need to put a jumper between terminals 3 and 4. So now we do have our controls wired in, we can button up the VFD. Once the cover and the keypad are put back on the drive and the unit is powered up, we are ready to start this unit in the remote mode by using the trim pot for speed control. As you see, when we power up the unit, we are still in the local mode, which operates from the keypad start stop button from the keypad. We press the local remote button to switch to remote. At that point in the default configuration the drive is looking for the control terminal strip to control the speed and the start and stop of the VFD. So wired into terminals 13 and 15 we 
close the contact between 13 and 15 by closing the start switch, the drive will start running. It will run at the speed set by the speed pot or the minimum speed, which is what we're running at presently. To speed up the drive, we adjust the speed pot. And as we see, we are controlling the speed of the drive by turning the speed pot up and down. To stop the drive, we open the closed contact and the drive will ramp to a stop. If we noticed when we powered up the drive, it did come up in the local mode. Uh, that is the default. On power up, the drive comes ready to run in local. To switch, change to remote, we had to push the local remote button. My suggestion is to change the programming so the unit does come up in the remote mode. To do so, we go into the menu system, press the menu button. As we see, we have highlighted all parameters. We select all parameters and we scroll down to parameter P0220. This is the local remote selection source. The default is the LR key, which is the local remote button, and LOC, which means it is default on power up in the local mode. Let's change that by pressing select. Let's change that by changing that to a value of 3, which says LR key REM, which means that we are coming up in the local, in the remote mode. This is the normal configuration. Most uh, customers are going to control the VFD through a remote type of control. And if any reason, if we lose power for whatever reason, we do want it to come back up in the remote mode if that's the way we are controlling. Okay, and now we power up the drive. And as we see, it does default to the remote mode. So now we can start and adjust the speed as necessary in the remote mode without having to switch to remote from the keypad.